In this video, I'm driving a Ford Cortina built in Australia and fitted with a 250 cubic inch six cylinder engine. And I've parked it in the shade because it is 40 degrees and I am melting. So yeah, we'll, we'll try and have a look at the outside somewhere where it's actually sunny. Um, but for the moment, uh, the important business is the um, underbonnet area. So we're gonna jump straight to that because out side um, it looks pretty much like a standard mark III cortina there is just a small matter of a bonnet bulge going on which is quite bulgy but i'll get the bonnet open and we'll look at the business end so yes this is another australian car with far too much engine under the bonnet of this cortina we've got the um, six cylinder engine out of a ford falcon of the same sort of time so uh, early to mid 1970s it is 250 cubic inches, that is um, 4.1 litres. And uh, this is before this engine went to a cross-flow design. So we've got the inlet, uh, there's the carburetor hiding under there, and exhaust on the same side. This side boasts some very attractive um, extractor manifolds, which looks um, absolutely marvellous. And there's a fly because Australia. Um, I forget how much engine, how much power this engine puts out, but I'll put the figure here and um, no doubt a vast amount of torque as well but this is all the more interesting to compare because i recently drove a six cylinder marina now the six cylinder marina had a badge on the side which said six cylinder 262 um, but um, 262 was just 2620 cc with the final figure missing 250 is a cubic inch measurement so um, Leyland were trying to be crafty and try and pretend that their 2.6 litre engine was equivalent with a 4.1. Um, I suspect it really wasn't. Um, but yeah, this car has been beautifully restored, by the way. It was back on the road in November 2018. And uh, yeah, the, some, some little details are missing, like the correct cap for the washer bottle, but otherwise it's beautiful. And uh, the eagle eye amongst you, um, hello Pete C, if you're watching, he does like his Cortinas may notice some detailed changes. I'm not enough um, up on Cortinas to know what's different here. But I believe the modifications they made to the bulkhead to fit this engine were carried over to all the Australian built Cortinas because they obviously did four cylinder versions as well. Um, this one has a few sensible mods like um, electronic ignition. It's got um, an electric cooling fan to back up the engine fan um, but otherwise is fairly stock it has been lowered and it has got some um, big fat rubber on but given the reputation these had for understeer that's not all that daft these are um, uh, Bathurst globes apparently uh, we used on the Falcons for racing and then um, they offered the design to Ford to fit to other models in the range uh, what well, we've got the wheel on a skew you can see the um, stiffer lower spring in there anti-roll bar mount the steering rack gator and uh, that's all part of what made these cars so successful you've got a steering rack um, independent front suspension we're still on a live rear axle but it's a pretty well located one until the void bushes wear out and um, so there we go big beefy axle under there good grief the ground is so hot i can't even touch it um, so all very impressive uh, I'll get the bonnet down, we'll have a look inside. I just paused to take in these beautiful Trico wipers. Very pleasant. Mm. Um, but yeah, if we jump aboard, we've got some slightly retro door mirrors going on. It's a sea of vinyl, which is bad news for me, but at least it isn't black vinyl. Um, beige and brown, very much the colour themes going on in here. Too much lock on. Let's try and get a bit off. It is very heavy steering, big fat tyres and a big fat engine. Um, so there we go, it's the earlier TC Mark III dashboard that falls away from you absolutely beautifully, I must say. It looks lovely. And we've got a choke control there, which is rather redundant today. Uh, allegedly some ventilation. Uh, there isn't much going on. A belt warning light. Ooh, 
dual brake so dual circuit braking system and some switches which aren't labeled um, some of these must be wiper related and some of them lights um, let's have a play that's a two position light switch I would guess that that is your normal lights I have no idea what that one does we, we got further ventilation down here as well uh, we've got a lovely eight track apparently I don't know where the rest of it is maybe it's not fitted yet um, and that glove box that contains all your USB de desirable things um, very comfortable sculpted seats with uh, head restraint integrated even if it isn't quite high enough but nonetheless it's uh, pretty decent nice vinyl headliner interior light which doesn't work uh, free speed Borg Warner automatic uh, the, I believe you could have a manual as well and a uh, handbrake which isn't being used because uh, I never do uh, two pedals as you'd expect um, but yeah really nice driving position good view out uh, I'm gonna put the ignition on see if we can make some wiperage occur um, let's try one of these ah that's heater fan right okay that that's wipers uh, where is our wash is it is it down there somewhere I can't see anything down there uh, earlier Fords definitely had a foot operated um, windscreen washer this one doesn't seem to have that and now I'm all confused I don't know how you wash the windscreen um, I would should have inquired because like I say none of these switches are actually um, none of them have any clue I still don't know what that does and that still feels like lights um, so yeah there we go we don't know what that does that's gonna be horn that's a good horn and indicators very quiet still going on but yeah I've got no more buttons to play with so one wonders how the screen wash operates oh there we go ah there we go we can see um, well unfortunately we have got a triangle of doom going on here so that's a little um, unfortunate we just had an mg3 pull in next to me while i'm doing this so you'll have to put up with a bit more noise i'm afraid i'm sweating like the proverbial hog um, let's jump in the back very quickly well here in the back i'm not shutting the door because it's just too blooming hot it's quite spacious i've got decent leg room it's a bit tighter behind me but you know that'll do got a center armrest here as well and a louvered rear window to try and keep the sun off my neck so um yeah, this is where you feel just how much more spacious the Cortina Mark III is. I thought it was longer than the Mark II. Apparently it isn't, but it is wider. And uh, I think it makes better use of that space. The wheelbase is also a bit longer. So um, it offers a bit more comfort. But yeah, everyone's driving into my shady spot for some reason. It's very cruel of them. Boot space, it has to be said, is also pretty impressive. Um, lots to see in there not lots to see in there at all what am i about there's nothing to see in there uh spare wheel of a full size nature is beneath it and i've just dropped my microphone wonderful but this is hub nuts so i'm keeping that in the footage anyway right if i sound a bit harried uh, that's because i am this heat is proving too much it's proving too much for my camera uh, the battery is seriously struggling to um, cope with the heat so I hope this keeps on working but it's a hilariously talkative Borg Warner transmission but um, oh, it sounds pretty blooming potent to me um, we shall hit reverse we shall struggle with the steering especially as my hands are now all sweaty and um, we should go into drive because this is really amusing. Keep it moving to try and make the steering like that's still heavy, but you know we have got fatter rubber on. Into second. And I think we're probably into third as well, because it's just so much torque, it frankly doesn't need the open ears. Yeah, I suppose it's 
engine weighs quite a bit more than the 2.6 litre engine in the Marina, but it's similarly hilarious. It just launches you down the road. Um, yeah, I am very, very hot. Back into first, quite amusing. So the um, Cortinas, like I say, they took the Falcon engine. They did beef the suspension up a bit, but probably not as much as they should have done. So I think the fact the owners fitted um, heavy duty springs to the front of this is probably a blessing, to be honest. Whoa, jeepers. Feel the weight up front. So there you go, that was the hairy chested Ford Cortina. Interesting to compare it with the Leyland Marina, um, also with a six cylinder engine. But um, I'm sorry Ford fans, but I must say the Marina was probably my favorite. It's very difficult because neither car was entirely stock, and um, but um, the, the steering was better in the Marina. It should be, it has Morris Minor underpinnings and they steer very nicely. And um, this for me just doesn't feel quite so assured in the bends, although it, I think it's got considerably more grunt. Um, it delivers it in a very different way though, more low down torque, whereas the um, E6 engine in the Marina was a bit of a screamer. So do go, do go and check that video out if you haven't seen it already. Um, but yeah, I, I must thank um, David for letting me drive this beautiful example um, here in New, Ze uh, New Zealand. No, he's from New Zealand. The car is from Australia and that's where I am, melting. Melting, I tell you. So I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.